So that's what lies ahead. But now to the here and now and the, uh, the prospects of Saturday in Sydney. The Swans and the Dockers, you have the image in your mind of how this is going to look. And it's our privilege to have both captains with us. So let's begin in Perth with Matthew Pavlich, the skipper of the Dockers. Matthew, welcome to AFL 360. Jared, Robbo, nice to chat. Uh, Matthew, you can never choose the moment of adversity in football or who it will be. So give us an insight into how it's been for Michael Johnson and how it's been for the team losing him for the final series. Yeah, look, it's a significant setback for the team and, and obviously for Michael and, um, you know, the players are really feeling for him and uh, I have a, a fair bit of sort of sympathy for Michael, empathy, given the situation I had with my back a couple of seasons ago. So, firstly, I think we should acknowledge the courageous act he showed on the weekend to get himself up and ready to play and, um, unfortunately, he's not going to be able to represent the football club heading into September, but um, as has been the case this year, whoever has gone out of the side, we just feel the role and, and that, that person steps up. But it's bitterly disappointing for Michael and, as you said, a fair bit of adversity for the team to over cupboard as well. It does um, mean the question of Luke McFarlane's even more intense. So do you expect McFarlane to become available if and when? Well, we would love him to become available. We're one of our key leaders and a, and a fantastic defender and would add, add a lot to our back line. But at this stage, he won't be ready for this weekend. And, um, you know, stranger things have happened, but uh, he's, he's got a bit of work to do now um, to get himself ready for consequent games. So hopefully he gets himself right. He's ultra-professional, very driven, Luke, and he wants to be out there. But um, he's got a bit of work to do. I love the word faith. Pav, but the fact is Johnson and McFarlane are two of your champions of the, of the club. Do you have to change the way you play to give, I suppose, a little bit more coverage down the back? Look, it's possible, Robbo. Um, we like to keep things pretty similar and, and relatively consistent because you need that to fall back on, don't you, in hard games, hot, hotly contested finals. You can't really be second-guessing yourself. You need to be instinctive and you certainly need to play the way you play. So it's going to be a, a difficult question probably to be answered right now. I'm sure the match committee will sit down throughout the week, speak with the leaders and talk through it, but there may have to be a small tinkering given what Sydney have got up for it, obviously, and the offensive threat they pose. I don't think it's going to take away from where it's probably going to be won and lost. We're, we're talking to Karen Jack after we speak to you. We're going to ask him this question. Is it too simplistic, Pav, to say, because it's probably going to be wet, and we, we know the styles of both these teams. Is it too simplistic to say that the contested ball, the, the stoppage work, the clearance work, is that probably going to decide who wins on the weekend? You've been watching football a long time, Robert. You're a very good judge. I think you're spot on. Um, the midfield battle, it's always said it's won and lost in the midfield and that contested football, hard tackling, you know, getting in first, it's going to be critical because it gives the opposition's forwards the first crack at it. And clearly, Sydney have got some fantastic players, both in their midfield and up forward, some high talent. So ultimately, you know, Aaron Sanderlands and the rest of the midfielders for us have to get to work, get in our forward half and give ourselves a chance to score and, and keep the ball up there, which obviously makes it more challenging for Sydney to score. It's really going to be a street fight in the middle there. Kennedy, Jack, um, <laughs> Parker, they, they, they go at it really hard and you guys have got the bigger bodies of, of Fife and, and David Money will kick you in the head of, to, <laughs> to find the ball. I mean, it's, it, it really is going to be a scrap in there. Yeah, geez, if you're a spectator at home, you'd be absolutely thrilled and uh, enthralled with that, that battle inside, wouldn't you? It's going to be a little bit different from my end. I just want the ball coming our way. But, <laughs> but certainly, you know, it's a big clash and, um, and that's what big finals are about. Those big contests in the middle, big bodies. And, um, you know, I know our guys are primed for it. We sat there, I just sat down with Jared and I was saying before you come on, you know what, you know, Fremantle played at ANZ Stadium. I reckon it was 206, 207. It was 206. You kicked four goals. You haven't played at that ground since. You or the club, OK? So going to a, a, a venue that a lot of your players haven't played at, is that daunting or is it just different? Look, I think it's different. We're, we're staying out that way, so we'll, the guys will get a bit of a walk around and familiarisation with the surface and with... Uh, the ground and the change rooms and all those things prior to the game on Friday. But uh, that's a long time ago, Robert. Eight years ago, 2006. <laughs> How There's only we... a couple of us still hanging on. So. I'm trying to work out who oh, was what playing. Was it like, uh, 20... 
So Sandilands, McFarlane, uh, Crowley, Mundy and myself are probably the only ones. Uh, I might, or Johnson as well, but clearly he won't be out there this weekend for us. So a long time ago. And, but yeah, look, you know, from memory, it's, um, you know, it's quite a skinny ground. Um, you know, it's a little bit different from the SCG. So look, at the end of the day, it's got some goalposts up either end. There's a bit of grass on there and it's going to be about a lot more than just the, the surface and the arena that we're playing on. And how are you holding together physically? Very good, thanks, Jared. Yeah, no, I'm well. Um, I, you know, missed the uh, the Brisbane game a couple of weeks ago with a bit of a quad strain, but uh, quad tightness. But um, you know, ran the game out well against Port Adelaide, and um, we'll be freshening up uh, leading into this week. But feel really good given the age I'm at and uh, the amount of games I've played. I feel fantastic and re really ready to attack September. Okay, so now you're back in September. What's the experience of last year worth at this stage? Winning on the road in a qualifying final, belting Sydney in a preliminary final, losing a grand final. Is now the moment to harness all of that? I think that's for the individual to really draw upon their own experiences, what worked for them, what didn't. I think as a team, we draw um, some amount of confidence from the actions we showed last year in big games and big finals that... You know, our brand of football stands up um, if we're able to deliver that. So the individuals will learn from, you know, some of the more intricate details about how they went about their preparation, what happened in the game, what was a little bit different. Um, but as a group, you know, more holistically, I think we're really well placed to attack what is a big month of football. What about for you? What are you drawing on right now? Oh, 15 years of experience, um, a lot of challenging times, a lot of adversity, but more recently, one of making a lot of hard choices both on and off the field as a footy club. Uh, we're an extremely driven group. We're player-led. Um, we've got some fantastic coaches and, you know, the community down here in Frio are obviously wrapped to, again, be appearing in, in September in the final series. And I guess what we're all drawing upon is um, all those things collectively together and driving towards one common goal. We're really excited about what's ahead for us. I'm yeah. really proud of you, Pev. You're tipping your hair as well <laughs> late in your career. <laughs> yes, I am, Robbo. Thanks for pointing that. I was going to... You know, we were talking about before about unexpected questions. Oh, there you go. That's what I thought I might not get. But, uh, no, that's right. Just, um, what do they call it? The Swedish Blondes. Yeah. <laughs> good on you, Matthew. Good on you, Pav. And good luck for the weekend and for what's to follow. Thanks, guys. Cheers. <laughs>